welcome in some very special guests joining us this morning. Courtney Clenny's defense team, attorneys Frank Prieto and Sabrina Puglisi joining us this morning from Florida. Uh, welcome to you both. Very nice to see you. Uh, and, and this is a tough case. I think we can all acknowledge this is one of those tragic cases that nobody wins. No, no matter what the outcome is, nobody has won. Lives are changed uh, forever. Uh, and you both are very seasoned trial attorneys. So tackling this one, uh, you're certainly up for the task. I know that. Um, let's start with tomorrow, if we can, please, because so many of our viewers are wondering what's happening. Is this one going to go to trial? Uh, what can you tell us about tomorrow's hearing, please? Um, sh sure, Julie. First off, uh, Sabrina and I thank you for having us on the show this morning. Um, what's coming up is just a status hearing again. Um, I can tell you there's not much as far as court action will take place, but it's merely a status conference where we'll let the judge know kind of a timeline of when we expect to be ready for trial. Uh, you can expect to hear that we anticipate being ready uh, either by the end of this year or the first quarter of next year. I think that that's a realistic timeline. We've been taking depositions, conducting discovery, and uh, mounting a vigorous defense for Courtney. I know that you are. I know the last time we had you both on the show, uh, you were examining pieces of evidence and, and you, we talked about the elevator video, uh, that video that has nearly gone uh, viral. Um, and you had said, from your perspective, after getting some facts, you believe it's helpful to your client um, because you said what you can't tell from the video is that she's trying to stop him from going up, that that's the only way up through there and he has the key in hand. Is there anything else like this that you might have received that you believe is gonna be helpful to Courtney's defense? Yeah, and Julie, thank you for having us. Uh, and I just want to point out, we absolutely will be going to trial in this case. There's not even a question. You know, Courtney's innocent and um, we will have our day in court or she will have her day in court. Um, but what we think that elevator video and this other evidence that we are reviewing and that we found, everything really points to what we've always said, what she has always said, which is that this was uh, self-defense, that she was a victim of domestic violence. We see that through numerous interviews that the police have done. They've interviewed neighbors. Everyone they've interviewed has always spoken about Courtney as a victim. For example, the security guard from Las Vegas. For example, the security guard that heard her in her apartment crying, saying, you just hit me. Um, you know, I'll let Frank tell you about the uh, other neighbor that was interviewed by police. Yeah, go ahead, Frank. Yeah, Julie, there's, if, if I may, the, there is uh, police. This is not the defense, you know, figuring out some kind of uh, anonymous tipster here. This is police body cam by the city of Miami of one of the officers responding to the building that day when a neighbor unsolicited from across the way comes over to explain, listen, my girlfriend told me I have to come speak to you. It's all on camera. He says... The other day, this gentleman, meaning Obam Selly, was viciously attacking Courtney. They saw it from their balcony. They felt they needed to get involved. And that is a critical piece of evidence that Mr. Obam Selly, although the family would like to paint him as a docile individual, a peaceful man, that is absurd. He was a abuser and he was an animal. I know that both sides in this case have things that are helpful to the respective positions and things that are that are harmful and I'm sure there's probably been a lot of back and forth in trying to exclude certain things that you just don't want the jury to hear we have a clip of one of those things perhaps uh, one of the worst pieces of evidence this is at a previous incident where your client Courtney Clenny was recorded uh, screaming appearing quite out of control and called Christian Abamselli the N-word. Uh, let's take a listen to the clip and then on the other side, we'll talk about how this may or may not affect your defense. Don't touch me! What is going no, no, on? No, no, what are you, are you gonna get this no, mad at me no, when no, I'm no, apologizing no. to you? No, Christian. But you're thinking I'm doing it on- Drop your attitude, drop not, your high pitch. Okay, I'm not doing it on purpose. You're so sorry, you know well, the right thing to do is to tell me. Yes, and I am so sorry. So shut up and let me slap you. You're not gonna slap me. Give me my phone. 
You have your phone. I don't have it anymore. What Find it and charge it. Why? Oh, and when she says, you know, not only, I mean, calling him the N-word, but this was that same clip where she says, shut up and let me slap you. If the jury hears that, uh, what happens? Look, there's going to be back and forth on both sides, as you said. And in any trial, what's important is the fact that at a trial, the truth should come out, right? So there should be all of the evidence. But... What you're only seeing there is a snapshot, right? I mean, and yes, those are hurtful words. Nobody should say that. And, you know, that's not great. But at the end of the day, that doesn't tell you whether he attacked her on the date of this incident. It doesn't talk about how he choked her and threw her to the ground and how she told him to stay away from her. And he still charged at her and she had to defend herself. So, you know, I think the point what we would try to say is people need to just wait. They need to hear all the evidence because it will become clear that really she is the victim. We know this and relationship. Julie, if I could just add to that. Sure. Go ahead, Frank. Sure. Uh, you know, Florida law is very clear. There's a statute about surreptitious recordings. Uh, Florida is a two-party state. Uh, any kind of secretive recordings. The statute's very clear, should not be coming into evidence. So clearly, you know, if, if the judge is following the law here, and I think she will, Judge Cruz is very intelligent, uh, she'll be keeping this out of evidence for the jury. But again, to, to echo what Sabrina said, yeah, it's, it's, it's an ugly conversation, but what you don't see is that he gaslights her before these conversations. That was his MO. And in his, a letter written to Courtney, he acknowledges his abuse by gaslighting her. That will all come out in trial. This is really interesting, and, you know, and, and I'm certainly reserving any judgments until I see all of the evidence. Uh, but I, I do have a lot of interest in, in my off time in domestic violence cases. I do a lot to volunteer in the prevention movement. And um, I, I'm curious, I've thought a lot about this and how this is a tough case you, you both have. I mean, recordings like that, I mean, it just, it leaves such a bad taste in your mouth and it's so offensive and, and, and harmful. I'm curious, do you plan on using domestic violence violence experts as part of your defense here to show exactly what you were just saying, Frank, if there was gaslighting, are you going to try to establish it that way? Absolutely. We are already looking to experts. There will be experts on the defense side. Um, they will be coming down the line in a few months. We'll be rolling them out and filing our witness list. But absolutely, you know, it is so common, as you know, Julie, being involved in domestic violence, you know how so many uh, abusers, they manipulate the victims in a way, not just physically, but emotionally as well. And so often those victims, they, they protect their abusers. And that's exactly what we have here all the time. When the police would be called, she would say, no, everything's fine, everything's fine. Um, it wasn't until a couple of days before this incident she had the bravery to come forward and ask for help. Did she have a restraining order in place? Unfortunately, no, no because uh, this happened. No, okay. Um, you know, one of the things that I think is going to be very difficult for uh, you all to contend with them, certain that you would, you know, acknowledge uh, and agree is that there was a previous stabbing incident. She stabbed him in the leg. Um, is that coming in to evidence? Uh, Julie, if, if, well, when the evidence is examined, uh, especially the, uh, the medical examiner's report, there's no evidence of any stab wound on his legs documented. Um, there's no evidence other than uh, some text messages. Uh, we believe right. that that's not true. It's it's not true. And, and uh, any other incidents, we you know again this will come out. But we have we have significant evidence about the manipulation and lies about uh, the, the Christian perpetrator on, on Courtney. And you know what's interesting about that, Julie, also is that when you see those text messages, right? Mm -hmm. Look afterwards. You'll see her responses. Not one time does she say. Yes, I'm sorry I did that to you. Um, in fact, the one where he claims she cut him in the face with a, a knife, you know, she says to him, 
yeah, you tell the hospital what happened and I'll tell them what really happened. And so you have to ask yourself, what does that mean? Why would she say that if she was the one who actually cut him? So there's more to this than, you know, what just meets the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, I, I think everybody wants to know whether she's going uh, to testify, I, and I know you both are limited on what you can share, but sometimes you know, you, you, I'm sure you both have had this situation where a client is intent on testifying, you know, no matter what. Uh, anything you can share with us regarding whether we'll hear her tell her story when it does come time for trial? Well, Julie, I'll let, I'll let Sabrina uh, uh, follow up after I, I just tell you that uh, obviously, you know, as a trial strategy, um, whether your client testifies or not is kind of what you, it's a game time decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, if the case is going great, we probably don't need to put her on. We have her statement, which is consistent throughout. Uh, we have body-worn camera footage of her speaking to the police from the minute they showed up, explaining what happened that, 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 that evening. Okay, so game time decision on that one. And we understand, you know, we respect that. Um, one last question for you, please, before I let I have so many, um, but while we have you, I think one of the most damaging pieces of evidence is the, the knife wound and the way in which it entered. We know the state of Florida really kind of hung its hat on that. There was the big press conference announcement about her charging uh, some months later after the incident saying that um, there's no way it could have happened the way she said it happened, saying that she threw it and they said it was done in a downward motion. Uh, curious if you've explored this with any of your own medical experts. Julie, we have. And uh, Julie, I'll let Sabrina touch on that, but uh, you can rest assured that uh, this is uh, be being addressed, has been addressed. Um, I'll let Sabrina uh, follow up on that one. Yeah, go ahead, Sabrina. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. We're, we're confident. We're confident that um, the evidence supports Courtney's statement about the knife being thrown because she was trying to protect herself. And you know what? We'll be happy to come back on and talk to you about it as soon as we're able to present that evidence. Yeah, no, please do. Open uh, invitation uh, to you both. I know you have a lot to uh, work on uh, in terms of uh, preparation for this case, tomorrow's hearing. But thank you for making time uh, for us here at Court TV. Frank Prieto, Sabrina Puglisi, thank you kindly. Take good care.